Performance Unleashed is a showcase of the physical and mental challenges of athletes in training. In this video, we highlight the importance of preparation, nutrition, and hydration in conquering the challenges of the triathlon. The triathlon is where determination meets possibility. Athletes embark on their own journeys of endurance. These athletes stand before their dreams, ready to take on the ultimate test of body and mind, the triathlon. This isn't just any race. It's a grueling combination of swimming, biking, and running, pushing them to create new limits of their human potential. Triathlons are not just a competition. It's a revelation of the body's remarkable capacity and the resilience that lies within. Join us as we reveal the depths of strength and technique training. Along the way, Marilyn Chichota, a leading triathlon training expert, will help unravel the physiological and psychological challenges that await these athletes. You will witness their unwavering commitment as they push beyond normal boundaries, overcoming discomfort, pain, and exhaustion, offset by their passion and the pursuit of their dream. While swimming, biking, and running, as we progress through this video, you will also hear from endurance athlete Rob Verhelst, who truly lives the lifestyle as a wounded Air Force veteran and longtime firefighter, as well as an athlete. So in my time since 2011, when I started doing them in full firefighter gear as Fireman Rob, I've done 23 full Ironmans, 29 half Ironmans, and I couldn't count the number of marathons and 5Ks, but it's been, it's been just a, an amazing journey of, of pain. Improper nutrition and dehydration can derail any athlete's ambitions, compromising their performance and challenging their very safety. The battle with dehydration is waged in each stroke, pedal, and stride. You need to appreciate the science behind the body's reaction to dehydration during these arduous stages. Welcome to the first chapter of the triathlete's training camp. The aquatic challenge of swimming. As athletes plunge into the cool, shimmering waters, the first set of challenges await the triathlete. Every swim session has a designated goal to what we're trying to achieve that day. So for one day, it might be skill and technique based. And we're really working on refining their techniques. Swimming is a technical sport, right? It's one of those ones that no matter how fit you get, if you don't have your technique down, you're not gonna get any better. So we might have one swim that is designated solely towards technique and aerobic conditioning where we do um, continuous swimming for extended periods of time at a low effort. Might even add in some what we call pulling where it's got some strength-based focus to it. We really break down the technique and keep things fairly easy and, and build up this big conditioning of what we call aerobic base. Then another day, it might be really focused on speed where the whole, we have a nice warm up, we do a little bit of technique, and then the whole session is focused on the absolute top end speed for the athlete so that when you know, they're, they're working on getting faster, getting off the line, being able to cover gaps, just raising their overall anaerobic ceiling and being able to be a faster swimmer. The swim portion demands upper body strength, graceful technique and core stability. Each stroke is a coordination of movements that must be perfected prior to the competition. Swimming really engages multiple muscle groups, particularly the arms, the shoulders and the core. Now, the water resistance amplifies the intensity of each workout, but there is a catch. With each stroke, athletes lose vital fluids through sweating and breathing. When you're in the water, you may not realize that you're losing fluids from sweating because you don't get the biofeedback of sweating like you do on the bike or the run, but you are. Proper breathing techniques in open water are essential, but it also adds to dehydration at every exhale. Dehydration can cause cramping in the water, compromising stroke efficiency and increasing the risk of exhaustion. Athletes must maintain a steady pace as they navigate through the turning water to stay in the competition. Professional athletes know the importance of being prehydrated, especially for the swim. Even in a crowded lake, the isolation of open water can be mentally draining for athletes. It requires focus, 
concentration, and the ability to conquer inner doubts. If their bodies are lacking in proper nutrition or electrolytes, their, their performance can quickly diminish. The waves may crash against the athletes, but they remain steadfast in their pursuit. So the importance of recovery can't be said enough, especially for myself, while either endure, during endurance athlete or while at the firehouse. And the biggest thing for endurance athletes is that you're gonna train over and over and over, daily, daily, daily. And you're gonna try to push the envelope. Well, how do you push the envelope if you're depleting yourself and never taking that time to recover at the end of the day? Welcome to the second stage of the athlete's relentless triathlon training, the adrenaline pumping ride of cycling. As they embark on this second leg, the thrill of speed merges with the intensity of endurance. A full Ironman bike leg is 112 miles. This journey can take them through sweeping vistas and challenging terrains, testing both their physical and mental fortitude. All training provides a stress. Right, that's why we're doing it. In a, in a camp environment, we're doing what's called an overload stress. We're exposing athletes to more than what they're gonna do at home. Maybe it's harder terrain than they're ever gonna do at home. Maybe the elements are much harsher and harder when they're ever gonna do at home. Their training partners are pushing them a little bit harder. It's more volume than they typically do. So there is all kinds of, all training, the purpose of it is to, to add stress to see the athlete get stronger when they recover from it. In, in a camp environment, these stresses are really high. It's a high, it's an intense week. And that's on purpose, right? It's setting up their season. They're doing more volume. They're doing a little bit more intensity and just the stresses of being a new environment, a new city, different conditions, new training partners, more competition, all of those things. So there's a heavy stress for sure, but in a good way, that's what we're after. After the swim, cycling engages a completely different set of large muscle groups in the legs. It's demanding sustained power output. It becomes a grueling test of stamina. The power of their legs is the body's engine, propelling them forward on this exciting expedition. Hydration remains paramount while cycling, as dehydration can strike, especially during the bike leg. Having just left the water and now having to rely on different muscle groups with different nutritional needs. When we structured that training day, it wasn't based on mileage. It's a, that day is a really fun day and it's so specific to triathlon. We are riding our bikes to where we're going to run. And Gates Pass is one of those iconic climbs in Tucson. It's beautiful, it's a difficult, it's great views there. It provides some climbing strength, you know, and it's, it's technical on the descent. So it's got a little bit of everything to challenge the athletes. And then we get to where, where we're going. So it has this fun element because training can get mundane, right? And so there has to always be a little variety and a little bit of fun. And so if we're using, okay, we're doing this fairly difficult climb that is not only beautiful, provides some strength because we're climbing. We've got to use our technical skills to improve, to descend that backside of that gates pass. And then we're actually, it serves a purpose because we're getting to where we're going to run, which is very specific as well, because now we're gonna run off the bike when we get there. Proper nutrition, especially macronutrients like carbohydrates, as well as electrolytes and fluids are essential to sustain energy levels during each demanding stage. Each bottle of liquids and piece of food is vital to helping athletes conquer the physiological challenges that lie ahead. The full Ironman run distance is a marathon 26.2 miles, and that's after a 112 mile bike ride. Dehydration slows blood flow to the muscles, affecting power output and overall performance. You can lose two gallons of your body's water through sweat in less than two hours while cycling. This loss of sweat is how you lose electrolytes. A 2% loss of body water can equate to a 10% reduction of athletic performance. Athletes know races aren't won on flat ground. 
It's in the relentless pursuit of victory that compels them to push forward. They must keep control of their fluids, electrolytes, and nutritional intake. The camaraderie among the athletes in training is palpable. It's a sheer journey of triumph and effort. These brief moments of respite offer the chance for the athletes to regroup and recharge. The road unfolds before them, and with each mile, their dream of success grows greater, while the challenge of defeat also looms larger. Hydration is that proper fuel, that proper functioning of the car, which is your body. And for me, it's so critical to have that, that levelness. You don't want to get down into the, the deep end of be dehydration before you start to hydrate. It's understand the concept of prehydration, you know, during the competition hydration and then post-hydration for recovery. Welcome to the final chapter of the Athletes Triathlon Training Boot Camp, the heart pounding run. As they push forward, their bodies are like well oiled machines, converting every ounce of training into raw energy. Their first challenge faced is the impact of their joints and muscles. The repeated pounding of their feet on the ground creates tremendous stress on their lower bodies. The continuous jolts and shocks of running can lead to muscle fatigue and joint strain especially during long distance races like a triathlon. But that's not all they have to contend with. The scorching sun and rising temperature add another layer of difficulty. Yeah, we had the athletes run off the bike on that. It's a really great dirt road that has a, a good hill on one side. Now, early season, you know, as triathletes, we need to train specifically. We need to be able to run well off the bike. So that happens naturally created within this session. We bike from Gates Pass, we hop off the bikes, we change, and then the terrain is picked, you know, at early season, dirt terrain, that's nice and easy on the body as far as pounding. There's a really big strength element, which is important early season because it's a long climb and it's a loop. It's beautiful back there, so that helps the minds for the athlete. They get to see something new. It's the Saguaro Forest back there. And, but it's a long, it's a fairly long run. You, you know, they're out there for about an hour after it taking them almost two hours to ride there. So, you know, they've, they've ridden over a climb. Now they've got to run off the bike. And by design, I picked a route that offers you know, it, it offers some strength. It's a group setting. So again, you're probably gonna be running a little bit harder because you wanna keep up with your friends. It's soft surface, so we're we're protected as athletes early season, but we've got we've got a strength component there where we're out on the hills back in the back in the forest. So, you know, that's again, without them even realizing it, we're training very specific things for early season and there's all of these little elements placed in there that are not by mistake. Sweating profusely, runners lose precious fluids that their bodies require to wick away that buildup of heat generated through these vigorous activities. They need this cooling system to perform at its peak. Liquid and electrolyte replenishment is essential. Dehydration while running can lead to reduced blood volume making it harder for the heart to pump oxygen-rich blood to the muscles. This can lead to fatigue and impair the, really impair the athlete's overall performance. But water alone is not enough to stave off the dehydration. Professional athletes know the importance of staying hydrated. Each water station is a lifeline, refueling their bodies as they push forward. Athletes must replenish the electrolytes they have lost. Their bodies are begging for sodium, chloride, or salt. As the miles pass under the runner's feet, their bodies face an incredible test of endurance and willpower. Cramp pain is real possibility. Cramps can stop the unyielding determination of the human body quickly. And so, the tale of the athlete's triathlon training reaches its apex. The athletes have pushed themselves beyond their old limits transcending the boundaries of what they once thought possible. Throughout the swim, the bike, and the run, 
they face physical and mental challenges that would make most falter. An athlete's journey is a testament to the potential that lies within each one of us. The power to overcome, to achieve, to dream. In the gauntlet of triathlon training, we witness the resilience of the human body and the triumph of the human spirit. The athlete's journey doesn't end here. It's just the beginning of a lifetime of exploration and discovery. Training is how we prepare ourselves to achieve great things. For in the world of triathlons and beyond, the human spirit embraces even greater challenges. Today a marathon, tomorrow a triathlon. What does the future hold? Maybe an ultra distance race like the Everest Challenge or the Leadville 100. Embrace your journey, for it's not just about the finish line, but the transformation that unfolds along the way. This is Performance Unleashed, a celebration of extraordinary athletes and an invitation to redefine what it means to challenge yourself to achieve greatness as you define it.